Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 358 K and Kale Show, starting a new piece featuring Fortnite. And of course, this is part two. Part one is up there or down in the description. Go watch that first. Okay, let's go ahead and get back into today's show. So I took a quick break here and I added some additional details. This is where we left off. So earlier we had the body kind of laid out. I was pretty happy with that. And now what I want to begin doing is I started adding in some additional details such as like the rocket launcher. I was looking at this concept art over here, this beautiful concept art, by the way, uh, of this knee pad and just adding in those additional details to get us closer to our lovely urban assault girl. So now what we're ready to do, we are ready to take our sketch and we are ready to get rid of everything else, get rid of everything else, and we can begin making our final piece. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. And now we can make it large and in charge, people. We want it large and in charge. And I'm thinking that I want the camera to cut off right around there, probably. Because I don't want the foot to be visible, but I want just enough. I've always heard you don't want to cut things off at the ankles and off at the knees. I don't know whoever said that, but it makes sense. Maybe right around there looks good. That actually looks quite good because then we could at least have the edge of like a box or something peeking up. Something that she is theoretically standing on, I think would make sense in this regard. So maybe we'll roll with that. We'll, we'll decide what that is later. But for now, we are about to launch into the next part of our process. And that is cleaning things up. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the opacity on this and we are going to begin going in there and we are now defining and refining our line art for the piece. So let's go ahead and get started. I like to use a blue or a purple kind of, just adding a little bit of texture in there or a little bit of color in there. The texture is with the brush. In case you guys haven't downloaded my brushes for free, that link is also in the description of every single video. So you got no excuse why you shouldn't be making art to the level of this, because you have the tools. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> I'm in a bit of a, I'm in a sassy mood today, if you couldn't tell. But okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we have, um, let's go ahead and start with the most important part. I know that all of you are thinking, and that is of course the face. So here's how I like to begin laying out my setup for the face. I like to think about things in perspective. You guys have heard me talk about this before. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll draw in a circle and a chin shape, okay? And a little change that I made to the previous sketch, as you saw here, and he, here, wait, where's the old one? So in this old one, the mason jar was covering up a lot of her face and I didn't really like that. I liked that the lips were pursed and kind of sticking out a bit, but uh, I wanted her nose and the profile of her face to be a little bit more visible. Oh, we know who we're dealing with. We know which character we're dealing with. We want this to have a certain likeness to the character that is represented here. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this in. So we've got this shape and the chin shape. We've got some general uh, body parts, or we've got some facial features that are already in a good spot for us. So I kind of want to uh, copy the shape of these eyes. I really like the shape of these eyes. I want her to be looking way over to the side. So we'll kind of run with that. I like to put a little shape right there. I'm actually gonna move this over so we can get as close to the reference as possible. So another thing that helps. Zoom in, we wanna be working as close to the reference as possible. But even now, even in this stage, I like to keep things fairly simple. I'm gonna adjust the, actually I guess it's not too bad gonna adjust the exposure on the camera. I kept the controls up this time because right now it's like really overcast here in the Bay Area. And so oftentimes I'll be drawing for like half an hour and then I'll look over, I look like a ghost or I look like I'm literally speaking from the heavens, which is kind of cool, but we'll keep the exposure on point today so that way it doesn't blow out your eyeballs. All right, cool. So I like the general position of this nose as well. So we've got the nose here and then, oh, we can kind of draw in. Do you see how once we start laying in these shapes, we can start to see, I like to imagine this in 3D. So I'm thinking about ellipses. I'm thinking about things from this angle. 
Um, and already I can start saying things like, okay, well, the other eyebrow would be right here. Oh, I really like the position of this nose right here, this nose and the nostril. This looks quite nice. We can soften this line right here. And uh, the lips are looking quite good right there. Okay, right about here is where the lip will be pursed up against the drinking glass, the mason jar. Okay, so that'll be like that. This lip will be resting on the bottom. And then this chin is a little bit, I think I made the chin a little bit long. That's a common thing that I do. When I'm viewing a character from this angle, I'll tend to make the chin just a little bit too long. So let's go ahead and drop it down a little bit. Let's see if we can get the look we're going for. Actually, that looks a little weird. <laughs> looks kind of weird. Let's see if we can take a step back really quick. There we go. That's the look we want. And right there, the mason jar is going to cover just the edge of this nose. But we should still be able to get a lot of the, the character's face in there. You see what I'm going for here? There we go. Okay, now from this angle, this is always a hard angle to draw characters from, uh, admittedly. Because you always want to... Like a common mistake that I always make is that... Um, you draw the, the chin, or you draw the jawline to the chin, but you forget how much of the underside is actually gonna be visible. You can see as I tilt my head upwards, you can see a lot of the underside of my neck and the, the bottom of my jaw is visible. You wanna make sure that you show this in your character as well. And you do that by thinking in terms of things like this. So you'll draw the neck down like this, right? And then you wanna think about this piece of geometry that happens. You want to think about that. Sometimes I like to just sketch in the actual shape, just for later reference. And then this part of the jaw actually goes up and joins with the ear. So we can keep that fairly low contrast, but that should help us. That's the end of our piece. That looks pretty cute. That looks pretty dang cute. I also like that the face is a little bit distorted from this angle, because that allows us to cheat a few things. I really like this hair. I don't want to lose this hair because this is really what signifies that it's this player model and not Ramirez. Uh, not that I have anything against Ramirez. Ramirez is awesome. But uh, I specifically wanted this model because I just like the design of this one a slight bit more. Slight bit more. I had this piece of hair kind of sticking off, but I don't know if I want that now. I think I might just want to do it like this. A little bit of hair kind of coming off like that. And watch how I will design this hair, guys. Watch how I do this. So I'll create a big clump like this, but then to add texture and interest to it, I'll just put a couple lines in like this. I don't, I don't draw a billion little lines, right? I'm not concerned about where every single piece of hair is going. In the similar style of Fortnite, it's just a few choice shapes, a few choice cuts. You can see now the, the sun is going away. Let's brighten that up a little bit more. There we go. Few choice cuts will get you to where you need to go. And then it is, of course, going to be joining right there. So maybe something like that is in order. Sometimes I'll add in a bit of value just for the heck of it. It's not necessary. In fact, it's arguable whether it helps or hinders. But uh, I like to do it. I like to add in value in these early stages. I, I think it helps me helps me visualize a few more things early on. I'm just going to bring this neck up just a tad bit. Yeah, it's looking good. And then we got the little braid right here. And then it goes back out to this huge piece of hair. And see, look at that. Look at the simplicity, guys. Look at the simplicity of the hair. Don't you love it? Those are too evenly spaced. It's bugging me. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Alrighty then. Alrighty then. Feeling quite good. Quite good about that. 
I'll put in a little bit of value right here just to signify the bottom of the, that that uh, face there, bottom of the jawline. And we're looking pretty dang good. Pretty dang good, if I say so myself. There go. Let's get that mason jar in there. Uh, let's see, I want to make sure I render this properly. So a mason jar has a bit of a, a flat plane right here that I want to make sure that I get. I want to make sure, like the slurp juice, I get it and that I render it properly. There we go. That's a slurp juice. That is a slurp juice if I've ever seen it. Let's draw on that liquid line. So we know where that sits. And let's go ahead and draw in the hand. So the fingers are gonna be, this is such a huge jar that you wanna avoid the mistake of doing this. I do this plenty of times. Once again, I'm speaking to you from the heavens. Maybe I shouldn't even worry. I'll just, I'll deal with it at the end. We'll just go like right in the middle with this exposure. I don't care if I look like a ghost. Okay, but here's the problem that I oftentimes run into is that you want to stretch the hand too big and then you want to like put the fingers like this, right, like this on the jar. But then do you see how like this hand, like imagine if you tried to open your hand that far and then your digits were still able to stretch around the edge of that glass. This is a common mistake that I used to make. Uh, you want to be considering the, like the, the size of the glass and make sure that your fingers are showing in the correct position. Um, so in this case, you would just see the fingertips. You would just see the, the very, very edge of the fingertips like this. And there you go. So then that gives you plenty of room to stretch the hand down like this. And then you've got the thumb right there. And there you go. You've got a hand holding a mason jar that actually looks like it could be physically done. Remember, bending the anatomy, not breaking it. Bending the anatomy. Okay, speaking of bending the anatomy, look at how I create that shape there. That's to show that the flesh is bending upon itself. Little subtleties like that in your anatomy and in your drawings go a long way. A long way, so don't forget it. And that just has to do with also just practice has to do with practice, like studying nuance. That might not even be perfectly realistic with what it's doing, but uh, it's close enough. And sometimes I like to exaggerate stuff like that a little bit. All right, cool, so that's looking pretty dang cute. Um, I kind of want to, let's see, for this character, I kind of want to show some more of the forehead here. I want to show more of the forehead happening here. Because on this model, on the side that we're viewing it from, you would see more of this, of the forehead. And the eyebrow, which we can kind of raise a little bit more, giving it a bit more of that cocky look. There we go, that looks, that looks a bit better. And then some of that hair kind of covers the ear. So it might look something more like that. I would say. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, yeah, I like it. All right, cool, so we are ready to move on to the next part. I decided to add in this little chain right here that is going to be kind of flipping up. Because remember, we have the plane of the chest is aiming straight at us, so a lot of that detail, such as the dog tags, might be kind of missed if they were just kind of laying on the chest, right? We'd have to draw them from, they're just gonna look like little slivers. Not very visually interesting, but if we kind of flip them up in a dramatic fashion, uh, we can create an interesting look while also adding some additional detail and depth to the character. So let's roll with that, okay? Next up, let's go ahead and move down towards our uh, shoulders. Okay, so something that really helps me with my torsos, guys, is that I always like to draw it out as like almost like a cylinder, like a bent cylinder first. So I'll do this type of thing. I'll be like, okay, here is the cylinder. This is where it connects. This is where the shoulder is going to connect. 
And we can kind of draw that down in that teardrop shape fashion like I've shown you guys before. Actually, I want to drop this down even further, even further. I want this shoulder to be as low as possible. And that can kind of go up there. And then from the shoulder, we know that, that this muscle connects to the chest. And then this is going to connect to our character's chest, just like that. But of course, we're not going to vacuum seal. We do not believe in vacuum sealing our clothes to our characters, right? We like skin tight. We like skin tight, but we don't like vacuum seal. Vacuum seal is when you draw this line between the boobs. Don't do that, okay? Some people like to get clever and they think, oh, okay, well, I can, I can get away with it. I can draw that line, but then I'll just draw a couple of these. Still, no, don't do that. That is actually physically impossible for clothes to do that. Okay, so don't do that. <laughs> Unless you are wearing spandex that has been vacuum sealed to yourself. Uh, but in this case, it's not. And luckily, the modelers at Epic Games knew about that too. So they made the clothes nice and actually realistic. Here's what you want to be thinking about. Is you want to be thinking about the plane that happens. There's a plane uh, from the point of the chest that goes out to the point where it starts curving back under. And that is what you want to reference. And so oftentimes I will show that with another plane or I'll show that with another uh, change in value. Show that with another change in value. And it's as simple as doing something like this. And there you go. Actually, that, that looks kind of weird. Well, the line works. The line works for now. I don't know why that's not working. Anyway, I think it actually looks fine with just less detail right now. But we can have a little bit of a fold right here and a little bit of a fold right there, right? That's fine. That's totally fine. Sometimes there can be little pinch points right there. But another thing that I like to draw is this line, which represents our rib cage. That will be slightly visible through the shirt, very, very slightly. And then another thing that really helps the helps to set off your character to make it look like they're indeed wearing cloth is to render in your folds, but also the seam line. Don't forget about the seam line that goes up the side of the shirt. Okay, cool. Let's draw this strap up to the backpack. Cool, all right, we are in business. We are in business. Cool, and from here, we can go ahead and bring out this part of the arm, this part of the anatomy. And again, as you go in to start rendering, you'll want to take your anatomy from this shape, right? Because we're not rendering those types of muscles. You want to start softening those shapes. So maybe just the edge of that line will show. Maybe just the very edge of this line will show. And see how that still signifies that there's muscle happening there. We we'll want to soften that right there as well, because those muscles do indeed connect. So then you'll have something like this, which still signifies that your character is muscular in shape, but uh, doesn't look weird. Doesn't look weird. Weirdly out of place. Okay, so I am liking this very, very much. Very much. Very much, yes. Let's go ahead and move to, I'm probably going to save the gun for last, if not completely omit it, because that could be a whole nother disaster in itself. Notice how I didn't really refine it because rendering something from that angle is not easy. It's not easy. And there's probably a lot of mistakes that are gonna be made. But you know what is already kind of put in place? That's right, it's the pants. So let's go ahead and get that down. Let's get that down. So I wanna start things off with this belt buckle. I really like this belt buckle that this character has. Oh, that looks like a lot of detail. I'm probably gonna say screw that. Uh, I might be able to. I think I can do it. Let's move it over. Let's copy it, people. Copying. When in doubt, copy. Let's go ahead and save it. Okay, so to simplify this, I'm going to render this as a box first, okay? This is one thing I will show you guys that I like to do, or a quick way to kind of solve things like this. You look at this, this shape over here, but you can start to break it down into simpler shapes. First, render it as a box in perspective, and then you can start asking yourself things like, okay, well, the belt comes out from right here. And what started as a box now quickly starts taking on additional detail. Do we get to a point where we're right about here? 
And it looks like this side. Oh, okay, yeah. Actually, that wasn't hard at all. That wasn't hard at all. Ha! What was I thinking? Of course I had it down. Of course I had it down. I have everything under control. Everything is always under control on the show, specifically. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, and that gives us just enough room for that other belt loop. Lovely. Lovely. And then this, this belt goes back like this, and then we got enough room for this loop for the grenades. The grenade loop. And again, I'm just referencing the awesome character art over here that this artist so nicely already figured out how all these things would fit together for me. And I'm just using that, guys. Just using it. And I highly recommend you do the same. Uh, oh, here's another really cool thing that you can do. Let's say that you drew this. I can already see this happening. This belt looks okay, but I want to put it more in perspective. Well, will we be good little artists and make sure that we can draw it right the first time? No, of course we're not good little artists. We're naughty. We're naughty artists. So we take the warp tool. Oh, yeah, by the way, let me show you how to do this. Lasso what you want to transform and put into better perspective. Hit Control T, then right click that transformation and hit warp. And then from there, look at this. <gasps> Oh my gosh, we can just warp it into perspective. That's so not so dirty. But yes, that is what I do. That is what I do. Uh, yeah. Loving it. I actually want to move this up a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, now for the next challenge, the grenades. Oh man, those look even worse. Okay, oh man, that is... That is probably not going to happen on this show. But you know what can happen? We can render these in simplified formation. And I can show you guys another cool little trick that I like to do. I'm going to move this over. Another cool little trick. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. Let's begin uh, blocking out. Yeah, we, we can call this blocking out the shapes of our grenade. Well, what is it? Uh, when we look at it in a simple form, it's actually just a cylinder. It's a cylinder with this kind of like bent edge. It kind of bends because it has that oh so beautiful Fortnite, Fortnite flavor added to it. Let's go ahead and add on that little doohickey there. And think of it as you're sketching things out or you're creating things with clay. You're sculpting with clay at first. Okay, so that is a general shape. That is our grenade. Then on top of that, now you'll want to start adding in the additional little doohickeys like this piece that kind of sticks off. And you can kind of go back here and erase and go back to this old stuff or the things that are behind, erase it out. Let's see, it looks like there's this type of plate that kind of lays on here. And again, this is where it looks like it gets really complicated. So I'm just going to do my best to just kind of fudge this into place enough to get by. And it looks like it's got this bar that goes across it. That's pretty cool. That's way cool. Okay, cool. That is how you fudge things into place. And it looks like this is oh so handily hidden by another piece of geometry. We love that. Hide our other mistakes. Hide the things that we can't figure out. <laughs> and there you go. You got what looks like a grenade. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's good enough. Go ahead and put that light in there. I know that's that's the thing that I always that always signifies to me that it is in fact a grenade is those blue lights that appear right there. Alrighty, and just like that, we've got ourselves a generally good looking grenade. Yay, that actually worked! Hooray! Hooray! Okay, so now that we've done this, oh, I don't want to forget about the tab, the yellow tab. Let's get that in there too. Kind of kick that out like that. I'm guessing that's the pull tab, that yellow part. Looks pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Let's go and erase the character from behind that. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so we have successfully rendered out a grenade. Isn't that nice? Now, are we going to be good little artists and draw it all over again? Of course we're not. We're just going to duplicate that sucker. <laughs> we're going to duplicate that sucker. Let's go ahead and warp it a little bit. Actually, do we need to warp it? No, actually, here's what we can do. Let us, actually, how do I cheat this? How do I cheat this? Can I do this? That might actually work a little bit. 
Yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm hitting uh, Shift, Control, and Alt all at the same time. And you can kind of pull this edge right here and see how that kind of puts a faux, I call it faux perspective. Put some faux perspective on there and kind of squish it back down. See how now that feels a little bit better right next to it? Let's go ahead and set that behind the other grenade. Stretch it however we need it to be. That looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that looks really good. And let's go ahead and erase it. Erase from behind. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Two grenades drawn. Two grenades drawn. Beautiful. Those, those look great. So yeah, always be on the lookout for things that you can do to save yourself a little bit of time. I'm going to change this pull tab a little bit because I think that will also help to reinforce that this is, in fact, from a different perspective. Cool. Yeah. Subtle changes. Uh, I find this really helps when you're making mechanical objects, robots. Say you draw like a little piece or a little structure that you like. Feel free to replicate it over and over again. Don't draw it twice. Who would ever do that? Don't you ever do that. Okay. So we've got grenades done. Yay. This is going amazing. This is just going swimmingly, isn't it? This is going swimmingly. Let's go and move it over. And I have no idea how long we've been going for, but I don't care. Because I want to get the rest of this body done. Let's say that let's get these legs done. Let's get these legs done. And if we're feeling really up to it, let's see if we can model that gun on there. I say model because I'm literally thinking in 3D when I do these things. Uh, nowadays, especially. Okay, so let's get in the most important part, arguably, of this piece, dat booty. Get dat booty in there. See how it like even has like that angularness to it? That's just me kind of writing a love letter to the designers at Fortnite, saying, good job, guys. You nailed it. And speaking of style, let, let's talk about that, guys. Let's talk about that. Because, well, let's just gush about it for a moment. The art style is awesome. However, when I first saw that Fortnite Battle Royale was being released, because for those of you who don't know, yes, it was in fact just a PvE game at first. I played it and it was awesome. It was fun. And admittedly, the first time that I saw the Battle Royale mode going live, I was like, ooh, is that is that gonna work? Is that, is that art style gonna work for this? I was a bit skeptical. I was very skeptical, actually. Uh, I just didn't think that it was, like it seemed like a blatant rip off of PUBG. Let's, let's just say that. And a lot of people still would argue that that's what it is. However, that type of game has been around for a while. I mean, I look at PUBG as ripping off the good parts of DayZ, right? Where you'd actually fight people and not the glitchy zombies. So yeah, it was just, it was the best parts of DayZ. Here we go, I'm actually adding in this seam line. Again, never forget your seam lines in your clothes, ladies and gentlemen. Never forget. Okay, cool. Now you've got the jeans that come up like this. We've got this leg that's gonna come out like this. And this is actually gonna feed into a really important part about clothes. A lot of people have been asking me about clothes. And I have a very good tutorial to give on clothes and folds. Okay, but let me first finish my rant about the art style. At first I was really, I was worried about it going into a battle royale PVP type game. I was like, this doesn't seem like a PVP type game. But actually what ended up happening was it, it grew on me and it's because it's because of the, well, not just the fundamentals of the design of the game artistically, um, because it was designed to have clarity from the very beginning, that ended up translating over to a game where you're supposed to view people, you're supposed to be able to see things from very far away. Um, that ended up playing out very well and it made the experience of playing a game like that very fun and very clear, as opposed to like muddled, Un, like weird, strange. I also like things like the fact that that free rotating camera, the free rotating camera is removed because I don't like the idea of being able to run your character in one direction and then use your mouse to spin around and look the other way. I like that in this game, your character is physically looking where the player is looking. So you can tell if you're sneaking up on somebody. I, I really like stuff like that. Little nuances like that are awesome. So anyway, okay, so let's talk about clothes. Let's talk about clothes, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so the first thing that you want to consider with folds, with folds, is pinch points. Pinch points. Let me go ahead and draw in the pinch points for you. 
So um, normally the cloth is designed, we can use this leg as an example. The pants are designed to go down this way, right? The cloth is designed to lay flat when your legs are straight, okay? Everybody knows that. But what happens when you pinch the cloth, such as in this area, when you raise your leg? That's gonna create a pinch point and folds are going to begin to happen in this area. However, there's another thing that people often forget. Not only do folds happen in pinch points, but folds happen when things get stretched. Things happen, or folds happen when things get stretched. So this fabric down here is going to be stretching up towards the knee, right? Because the knee is now pulling the fabric that's down here, normally by the butt and on the underside of the leg. However, there is a third thing that we need to consider, and that is the ellipses of the leg. And the ellipses of the leg look like this. So putting all of those things together, we should know that our folds are going to look something. They're going to follow these ellipses for the most part, and they're going to be stretching towards the leg. And there's going to be some additional stuff happening within the pinch point. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and put it into practice. See if we can put it into practice. So what I'm going to do here is, oh, another thing that really helps with this, you can see this line right here. This is the seam line that represents the center of the leg. Now, normally this seam line has to basically join at the crotch. It joins at the crotch of your pants. So we know that the seam is going to be stretched up and it's gonna to go to the side. Actually, it would be a little bit more of a diagonal at this point, something more like this. But then, hey, we can start to see, oh, the folds are gonna happen here and here and here. Awesome. And that helps to also show the plane change that's happening right here. If we were to add in some additional uh, values, sometimes I'll put a little bit of value down here. See how that feels fairly good? Actually, I need to kind of clarify this a little bit more because the fold actually needs to show here. We need to show that the fold is actually kind of popping up a little bit. That really helps your folds to look more realistic when you actually show them bunching up and see how this is getting pulled back towards the crotch. That allows, when you start doing stuff like that, it starts to allow your, your drawings to feel much more realistic, much more realistic. Oh, love it. Love it, there we go, that's what we needed. Put a little bit of value right there. Now that's a key for later. That's a key for later to remind us, okay, when I start shading this, let's make sure to show that value change right there to help signify what's happening with the folds in the jeans. Interesting, no? So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and continue with this good old piece. I'm gonna add in a little bit of value right there as well. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead, see if we can finish this out, at least block the rest out. Let's block the rest out. Let's move towards these, uh, let's move towards the leg. Because again, this is another pinch point. This is another heavy pinch point. However, a lot of this fabric is going to be hidden behind this leg guard, so we don't need to worry too much about that. These things in the drawing are held on by zip ties, which I think is absolutely hilarious. I, I don't remember if that's how it ended up being in the final character, but regardless, I just like that a lot. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Take a quick look at this. Okay, so we've got this plate here, which goes up and around. And more than ever, guys, I'm really starting to feel like, like artists should really be dabbling, if not studying very heavily, 3D modeling. You don't have to do it necessarily, but being able to think in 3D is such a valuable skill. It's such a valuable skill in the concept art world that a lot of people underestimate being able to turn a character around in perspective, being able to render guns and armor plating from different angles is so valuable because you can do it quickly, but most importantly, it's gonna help your team out. It's gonna help your team out and your 3D modelers to not lose their mind, which is very important. You need those, you need those guys. Uh, so yeah, learning that stuff now can be very, very beneficial to your team. I would highly recommend that you guys continue studying and learning how to draw in 3D. And I hope that watching me do this today 
has shown you that it's actually not too hard. It's not too big of a deal. Because when you look at things that appear, they can appear complicated at first, but when you start breaking them down into simple shapes, such as, you know, squares or blocks, what am I getting at? <laughs> you break them down into simple shapes, and then right before your very eyes, you can see that, oh my gosh, Keenan was right all along. I don't have to be afraid of this. I can have fun. I can have fun while drawing these 3D shapes. And think about it as clay. That's the best way I've been able to, to um, that's been the funnest way for me to describe it, is think of it as you're working with clay. Create that depth that you oh so desire. Save your team the headache, save your modeler the headache, and you will be loved. You will in fact be loved. Okay, cool, awesome. Awesome, look at that. We got ourselves some armor. Got ourselves some armor. And let's go ahead and draw just the edge of that boot. Edge of that boot, which is going to be covered by this box. It's going to be mysteriously stretching off into the distance. We're gonna deal with that later. Um, and last but not least, let's see if we can... Okay, I changed my mind, guys. I changed my mind. I really want to see this arm rendered and with it at least a general block out of the gun. You know what? You guys have stuck around for this long. The least I can do is draw a gun. The least I can do is show you the struggle that happens when you try to draw a gun with simple shapes. And who knows? Maybe we'll actually make it work. It'll make it work and it'll look awesome. In fact, that's what I'm planning on. So sit back, relax, because here we go. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to draw in is actually... I'm gonna draw in the hand, okay? Because we've already established where the hand is coming from and, and we can begin drawing in things like here is the handle of the gun. And we know that, okay, cool. So the fingers are going to exist here holding the gun. And of course, we're gonna draw the pinky out because this character wins in style. There we go, or actually wait, maybe it should be more like this way. So we've got two fingers here. And this hand will be out. This pinky will be out. Yeah. Drink with the pinky out. And then the trigger finger will be right here. So the reason why I like to do this, I like to draw the hand first. That way I know how to conform the gun around it. I, do, I know that seems kind of backwards. You're like, well, the gun doesn't move, but the hand can. But uh, I actually like to kind of put precedence on the hand. I feel like placing the hand first allows me to then... Uh, build the gun around it. So you can do things like, hey, put this trigger guard right here. Put this trigger guard right here. And then we know from that point, uh, the planes will kind of go back like this. And then on, right on the other side of this trigger guard, oh, whoops, I totally drew the wrong, the wrong style of trigger guard. It needs to be more rounded like that. There we go. Um, and just so you know, what's going on in the back of my head at all times is I'm thinking about three directions especially when I'm cheating perspective like this. We call this cheating perspective. So this is one way, right? This is, in fact, I'll draw this in three different uh, colors to really, for those of you who are into 3D modeling, you will appreciate this. Okay, so this first one will be the Z space. So I'm thinking Z space, which is this line, Z. I'm thinking X space, which is this way, X. And then I'm thinking Y. Y space, which is up and down. I guess this is kind of, well, whatever. <laughs> y space is going this way. In this case, let me draw the arrow coming in perspective to illustrate the depth. So I'm always thinking in terms of these three directions whenever I'm cheating perspective. And when you are creating a gun, in this case, it is all built of boxes. It's built of geometric shapes that are always, well, most of the time, going to be following one of these three lines. One of these three lines is always going to be coming into play, okay? So let's go ahead and move this over to the side, just as a visual reminder to think in 3D. And let's continue building this gun. Let's continue building this gun, people. All right, so I'm looking down here. So we've got the 
Up next, we've got the clip, which is going to exist in this area. See, look at this. I'll build a box, build a box with these things in mind, and then out of that box, what emerges? Nothing, none other than the clip. And this does take time, guys. I'm making, I'm simplifying this more than it actually is, right? I'm able to cheat this perspective. And again, it's not gonna be perfect, but the reason I'm able to cheat it to the extent that I can is because I have practiced. I have practiced my cheating skills. So I'm just kind of building this in 3D. I'm thinking in 3D as I build this. Okay, so back from here, we have this uh, geometry, which comes up like this, and then this becomes the edge of the gun. Cool. Uh, from this, looks like we've got some additional doohickeys in here. When in doubt, I'll just kind of begin slapping in general shapes like this. Here's a good example because we want to create this hand guard, this wooden hand guard, but it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect square. So actually the perspective of this is kind of throwing me off. I'm drawing this in, well, actually that doesn't look too bad though. The perspective was like highly accentuated here in the original sketch, which we could go back and do, but I'm actually liking the way that this gun is looking as well. It's not taking up too much um, attention, which I like. So let's continue. Let's, let's just finish this off, finish it off. Okay, now a common mistake that you might wanna do is when you forget about thinking in those three directions, you might wanna draw something across like this. You might start doing these types of things, like, oh, let's draw these sights. And see how drawing across, see how once I start drawing that line, it immediately feels off? It's because you're not considering, in this case, you should be using the z-axis. Use that z-axis. And which way does the z-axis go? It goes this way. Once you lay that in, ah, now all of a sudden it feels much better, much better. Use that z-axis. Let's kind of draw in this guard or this... Uh, this uh, retractable stock, there you go. That was the word. Let's go ahead and have that existing right over here. Uh, yeah, yeah, loving it. Let's draw on those barrels. Let's draw on those barrels, people. I love the way these uh, characters' guns look. I love the way the guns look in this game. They're so well designed. They just have so much like, character to them, even though they're just slightly, like ever so slightly exaggerated. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, and just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a gun. We have ourselves a gun in perspective and it doesn't look like terrible, doesn't look like terrible crap. Looks a little bit crappy, but at least we know that when we decided to cheat this perspective, we did it with semi-proper rules. Okay, semi-proper rules leads to a happy time. Trying to cheat too much leads to a bad time. Cheating without following the rules leads to a bad time. That's the lesson for today. Okay, we got the site there. We got this here. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I think I will happily, happily end on that. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. This is feeling quite good. I'm very happy with this sketch. And I'm happy that I was able to do this live for you guys so you can see some of the, the problems that arise when you are trying to refine your line art and ways that you can go about fixing those. And uh, yeah, so with that, I think we're gonna go ahead and end it. I'm gonna finish up this line art a little bit later. I don't wanna sit around too long. We might continue this next week. I hate starting stuff and then like just completely forgetting it, but I think that I can finish this. I like, Honestly, though, I think I might just end up going crazy on this, and I'll just do a time lapse for next week. We'll see. I don't know. All, all I can say is that I'm happy with that. I hope you guys got some good value out of this. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. Oh, yeah. And, of course, uh, the last thing that I'll say is that if you want to download this PSD as well as all the other PSDs from the past, and just click up here. It'll take you over to Patreon. The link is also in the description. Highly recommend you guys get in there. Study all these uh, sketches for yourself. Go ahead and turn everything on and off. Kind of build it. Build a bear, build your sketch, 
And yeah, hopefully you guys can learn something awesome from that. So we're going to go ahead and take off, guys. Thanks again for joining me live on YouTube. Or not live on YouTube. On YouTube. For this two-parter, if you guys stuck to, uh, all the way to the end, congrats to you. I hope you guys got some good value out of this. Let's go ahead and pull up the Instagram. And let's call it good. All right, guys. So I'm out for now. You guys take care. I'll see you next week. Until then, you guys stay awesome. Oh, yeah, and I didn't put the... Oh, I didn't put the music on here yet. All right, well, it's time for some good old, good old commentary. Yes, this is on Instagram, by the way, guys. If you want to get your art featured on Instagram, hashtag k and fan art. You guys are getting so good. I love these character designs. So good. Oh, got some sexy ones, too. Love it. Love it. You guys are getting great. See, this is why I love teaching you guys. I love teaching you guys because I love coming and looking at all the Cancale fan art, seeing how you guys have improved. It's truly a treat. Truly a treat. So keep it up. Post art. Post your art everywhere. This is great stuff. Great stuff. Oh, wow. I like that. Is that Kindred? Kindred uh, Anatomy Study. Love it. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. It's so varied, too. You guys have so many different styles and things that you like to draw. Love that Crash Bandicoot, by the way, Lushy. Great stuff. Awesome, if I do say so myself. Awesome. All right, guys, I'm out for now. See you guys later.